Hello dear students, welcome to the last lecture on Jain Ki Panjaiti Raj Act of 1989. This will be the last lecture in which I will cover in detail the district planning committee. Okay, and I already covered district development council in the previous lecture. You can go and watch that. And now we will begin with section 46, okay, that deals with powers, functions of district planning and development board, okay. So it's a straightforward statement. I don't need to explain it further. Simply the section 46 deals with powers and functions of district planning and development board. Okay. Now section 47 deals with its staff, its property and finance. Okay. So section 47. And now let's move to chapter 12a. Very important. Don't remember the name of the chapter. Just remember the section. This is a very important section. That is section 47a. Okay. I want you to remember this. It deals with district planning committee. Okay. District Planning Committee. Now we are going to study District Planning Committee in detail. Okay. So every district, every district should have a District Planning Committee. That is the first thing you guys have to remember. Okay. And uh, when there is a District Planning Committee, uh, it will consist of some members. Okay. And who shall be the members of this District Planning Committee? Let's learn about them. First, District Planning Committee should have a Parliament member as its chairperson only that parliament member who is representing that very district or that very area okay so first a parliament member will be the member of district planning committee and he shall also be the chairperson of it and but he should belong to that area or he should represent that area or district okay second is that members of state legislative assembly like block development council who belong to that district okay and the third is chairperson or chairpersons of district development council okay okay chairperson of district development council will also be the member of this committee okay that is district planning committee now the fourth is that every you know uh, we can say every district has a president okay district president and that district president or municipal uh, president uh, shall also be the member of district planning committee okay now district development commissioner should also be the member of it okay now district statistics and evaluation officer okay he shall also be one of its members then who uh, shall be the member uh, chief planning officer shall be the member and all district level officers shall be the ex officio members of the committee as i already told you that what is an ex officio member it is actually a person who is already holding an office and then by virtue of his talent or uh, something else he is supposed to hold another office or is the member of other office that is an ex officio member okay i hope it's clear section 47 a very important now moving to section 47 b okay that talks about functions of district planning committee okay so functions uh, you know of uh, every committee that is related to whether uh, you know district development council or halka panchayat it is very ob obvious that they regulate uh, you know or set up the plans for the development they kind of invest time you know in, in utilization or proper utilization of the schemes and other things and uh, in the generation of revenue and the distribution of revenue into the proper methods and the proper things that is actually the common functioning of all of these but you know in order to make uh, obvious it to you clear to you i will explain it further the functions of a district planning committee in a bulk is actually to formulate plans for the development of the district and to ensure the economic development and upliftment of the district okay and to formulate plan and non-plan budget okay of the district office now moving to part 13 that is constitution of panchayati adalat very important section 48 i want you to remember this it deals with panchayati adalats okay this is a new topic panchayati adalat should be present in every halka okay so for every halka there should be a panchayati adalat okay very important remember that and you know what will be the composition of panchayati adalat it shall have five members okay it shall have five members just remember it panchayati adalat should have five members and those five members will be nominated by a prescribed authority and this prescribed authority will be recommended by none other than halka panchayat okay simple okay so what should be the qualification of uh, the member of panchayati adalat uh, member of panchayati adalat should be first literate he should not be 30 uh, less than 30 years old okay and he should not be a panch naib sarpanch or sarpanch okay he should not be working under any government employment under uh, you know under the ut okay or he should not be 
uh, also he should not be under employment to some uh, you know corporate uh, or you know authority and uh, also uh, so these are the uh, some of the qualification that is related to the member of panchayati committee okay sorry panchayati adalat okay and uh, what is the term of it five years and the quorum that is minimum number of requirement for a meeting that should be at least three members so out of four members at uh, out of five members sorry at least three members should be present to start a meeting okay so procedure and conduct of business is talked in section 49 that's it i will not elaborate it further because this is only you need to know section 50 talks about chairperson of panchayati adalats okay who shall be the chairperson okay so it's a very easy that you know uh, the panchayati adalat members should choose one of the members as a chairperson okay one of the five members should be chairperson but if they fail to do so then the prescribed authority okay prescribed any prescribed authority who shall be prescribed or shall have the power to do so at that time within the 30 days you know time period should prescribe the chairman among one of his own members okay the prescribed committee will choose one of his own member as a chairman okay so section 51 talks about secretary of panchayati adalats okay who shall be the secretary actually the halka panchayat secretary shall be an agent or kind of a judicial clerk okay to panchayati to to panchayati adalats okay secretary of halka panchayat shall be a judicial clerk to the panchayati adalats okay that is section 51 okay very important section 52 again talks about removal of chairperson i have already again and again talked about it but just to mention here that government has the power to remove him they will set an inquiry committee if he is uh, you know supposed to be guilty on any misbehavior misconduct or lack of duty or negligence okay he shall be removed okay by the government's um, you know set authority whatever the government will set and uh, there shall not be any reappointment if he got removed he shall not be reappointed for that same post of chairman okay or chairperson then section 56 talks about criminal jurisdiction of panchayat adalat okay criminal jurisdiction uh, it simply means that the panchayati adalat shall have criminal jurisdiction over halka panchayat area okay halka panchayat area very important you know over that area it shall have criminal jurisdiction and they cannot take any action if it falls one of if it falls under one of these things what will be the uh, what will be those uh, kind of uh, ir irregularities that uh, cannot be done that is first that if a person is already been accused or punished and has been imprisoned for three years they cannot touch him and uh, if there is a person who has been uh, given life imprisonment other is if a person has been sentenced previously by panchayat adalat that is also uh, not eligible for them and if a person is a habitual criminal okay okay and also there is some statement that if a person is uh, you know bound to be a, of a good uh, demeanor under some sections of ipc so i don't uh, i don't think that is important here so that's it about okay now section 66 is very important i have mentioned it here it talks about civil jurisdiction of panchayati adults okay now moving to section 74 there are many sections in between but not that important section 74 deals with appeals and revisional powers appeals and revisional powers for example there is a decision that has been given by panchayati adalats there in first instance cannot be any appeal against them but in in case a sensitive issue is being raised and an application is given and within 60 days okay within 60 days the district judge and the session judge okay they shall set a they shall set an inquiry and if they found that the decision of panchayati adalat was illegal okay after inquiry okay then they shall reverse the decision of panchayati adalats if they find the scope to do so okay i hope it's clear okay so section 75 deals with decree okay orders passed are not to be altered simply means that if a panchayati adalat passes an order okay then they cannot reverse it they cannot reverse that order if it's passed it's passed unless unless an arithmetic a r i t h m e t i c arithmetic error occurred okay any arithmetic mistake or any silly mistake in you know document formation any printing mistake happened they can change that but without that they cannot change the order okay that is section 75 now section uh, 14 and that is the last section of jnk panchayati raj act 1989 that talks about miscellaneous things and i i found these two important here that section 80 talks about power to make rules means panchayati adalat can make rules of its own 
to for the smooth conduct of business and also section 81 talks about power to make bylaws actually what are bylaws bylaws are those laws which are you know generated by an authority for its a uh, smooth conduct of business or for the discipline of its officers for example if there is an organization and the organization makes laws uh, in order to kind of uh, you know give discipline to its members okay in order to you know create an environment where the business will be conducted smoothly for that uh, for you know those laws are called bylaws okay so that's it for today i think that's it for everything uh, related to jnk panchayati raj act 1989 i hope you have understood everything i have tried to explain it as simple as you know i could so I wish you best of luck for your examination and thank you again so much for watching and keep appreciating by subscribing to my channel.